So, um, I was around 16, maybe 17. And um, this is before I started driving. Or, you know, I had my license, but I didn't have no car. So, um, I started playing for this, um, this non-denominational church. And um, the church was actually, it was just starting up. And um, they actually started having services in this funeral home. And so, it wasn't uncommon for us to come for Bible study look over you know look over to the left and see a dead body you know see a casket there because you know they still was having business <laughs> during the week or whatever so we'd be like the way the sanctuary was set up at this church was um you know you had the pews and everything it was pretty big you had the pews and then you had the front there was no podium or anything i think they got an off they got a little podium to put up there but there was no like platform or anything the capacitor was just on you know <clears throat> on ground level and so behind the front area of the sanctuary was a wall you know a little I would say it was a partition but it was yeah it was a partition because it didn't go all the way up to the ceiling but you couldn't move it so it was a wall you know and in the middle of the wall where the pastor was standing was a curtain so he would usually come out of there you know <laughs> He would usually come out of there uh, in order to, you know, address the people or whatever. But um, behind this wall, that's where the band was. So you couldn't see us. So we were in the back playing or whatever behind this wall. But sometimes I would play saxophone. And, you know, saxophone is an acoustic instrument, meaning, and they didn't have a mic. So I couldn't stand in the back with the rest of the musicians. I had to stand in front of the curtain, in front of the wall. Um, to play and be heard and so when it came time for the pastor to preach I didn't really have nowhere to sit because I didn't want to be walking around during service you know I was taught that wasn't cool where these new people get it from they just be walking around like they you didn't do that when I grew up you got slapped this was like four stories in one so y'all are getting a treat you're welcome <laughs> but uh so what would happen is after I would play I would sit down on the side in the front and so in the front, all you saw while the pastor was preaching was the pastor, you know, standing in the middle, walking around or whatever. And you have me off to the side in a chair with my saxophone, you know, and, that's, and that was in the front. So since I was there while he was preaching, he would use me for examples. And sometimes he just took it too far. He was like, yeah, man, you know, you can't, you can't stay young. You can't do, you know, he was talking about something. I don't even know what he was talking about at the time because it was like five, six years ago. But he was like, you can't stay young, man. You can't have this nice soft skin. He rubbed my face, you know, because I didn't have any facial hair because clearly I was 17. But he, he like, touched my face. And, you know, he was the type of pastor, like, everybody was ready to fight for him or whatever. But when he touched my face, I, like, cocked back because I wasn't ready. And I just forgot he was a pastor. And so he was like, you can't have this nice, youthful, soft skin. I was like, and then, like, I saw, like, three of the deacons kind of get up a little bit. And I, was, and I was just like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is, the, this is the moment that I knew I couldn't be there anymore. <laughs> so, uh, basically, he was up there, and he was talking about how people hate what's good for him. And then he started talking about women and young women. He was like, you know, y'all like those, y'all like those thug men and everything. And then he looks at me, and I'm sitting there like, where's he going with this? And so he looks at me, and he was like, y'all don't want, y'all don't want a young man like this, who's clean cut, smart, going to church, <laughs> talented, plays multiple instruments. Boy, you ain't gonna get none until you get to college. Everybody's like, everybody's shocked, but they're laughing. And I'm sitting there just like, oh my God, I can't believe he just said that during the sermon in front of everybody. That ain't in the Bible. Who told him this was okay? Because it's not. First of all, who says that? Who? How did that get inside your mind? And who told you that was... I'm, I'm flummoxed. <laughs> As a 16, 17 year old, you can't handle stuff like that. Like that was, that was too muchery. Dot O-R-G. I'm sitting there mortified, you know, like I think my hand, my face was in my hands like the rest of the service. 
And so when I finally got out, of course, I wasn't driving, so somebody had to take me home. And so on the way back home, you know, I guess whoever was driving and taking me home, he wasn't in there to hear the pastor say that. He was like, yeah, he didn't really mess with you today. And then the wife was like, yes, he did, baby. He said he wasn't going to get no booty till he get the Oh, God. Oh, stop. Oh, God, no. <laughs> that had to be the most embarrassing moment that ever happened to me in church. Definitely subscribe, like, comment. You know, tell me your church stories. Maybe it'll inspire another one of mine. I don't know. But um, <laughs> definitely, man, just follow me on Twitter, Sax Prophet. Follow me on Instagram, same name. Y'all be blessed. And pastors out there, just stop using people as examples. Just, just try to illustrate your stuff with your words. Like, stop. Boy, you ain't gonna get nothing until you get to college.